Good morning, everybody. It is time for another AADL story time. Welcome everyone who's tuning in today. My name is Elizabeth. As always, I'm super happy to be here with you sharing some fun stories, and we do have some good ones today for sure. But of course, we have to say hello to everyone first. So let's get ready to do that and get our rhythm going. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as fast as we can. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as slow as we can. Hello. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as high as we can. Hello. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as low as we can. Hello. Couple more. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as loud as we can. Hello. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as soft as we can. Great job, everyone. All right, can I see your fingers? Open them, shut them, open them, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open them, shut them, open them, shut them, lay them on your lap, lap, lap. Creep them, creep them, creepy, creepy, creep them, right up to your chin, chin, chin. Open wide your little mouth, ah, but do not let them in. Shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them, just like this, this, this. Roll them, roll them, roll them, roll them, blow a little kiss. Mwah! Great job, everybody. All right, let's find out what our letter of the day is today. I have it right here, and it is the letter F. What are some things that start with F? How about family and friends? What's something around the house that starts with F? A futon? It's kind of like a couch. Uh, maybe what's something else? Oh, a frame for a picture? We have F stories today because we have stories about funny foods. We All of our stories today are about food and they're kind of funny. They're just a little bit silly today. So funny foods is our theme today. And before we start in on our first story, let's take our big stretch out wide. Big stretch up tall. Give yourself a hug. Tap your knee. Tap your nose. Tap your ear. Find your elbow. One more big stretch out wide. Big stretch up tall. Ah. All right, let's see what we have first today. We are going to start with a story called 
It looked like spilled milk. So let me get my felt board. Is that the best way? Hmm. Let me make sure you guys can see. I think this is good. All right. It looked like spilled milk. It looked like spilled milk. But it was just a cloud floating in the sky. It looked like spilled milk, but it was a bird flying high. It looked like spilled milk. What do you think that one is? But it was a bunny rabbit hopping through a field. It looked like spilled milk. But it was a tree. It looked like spilled milk, but it was an ice cream cone with lemon custard. It looked like spilled milk, but it was a sheep. <laughs> it looked like spilled milk, but it was a squirrel burying some nuts. It looked like spilled milk. But it was a pig on the farm. Oink, 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 oink. It looked like spilled milk. But it was a birthday cake with a candle on top. It looked like spilled milk and it was the end. Nice job everybody. That's a fun one to guess what's coming up next. All right, we are going to read a book before we stand up for our first song. And this is one of my favorites called Monkey, and it is a trickster tale from India. Monkey, chattering monkey. He lived high in a tree on the banks of the wide flowing river. Monkey jumped so high and so fast through the treetops that no one could catch him. But catching Monkey was exactly what Crocodile wanted to do. Mmm, murmured Hungry Crocodile. How delicious a monkey heart would be. Crocodile slithered into the water. Good morning, monkey, he called out. Good morning, crocodile, answered monkey. Where are you going? To the island in the middle of the river, answered crocodile. Oh, yum, said monkey. Delicious mangoes grow there. Oh, but it's too far away for me to swing. <gasps> Climb on my back, my friend, called crocodile. I'll take you to the island. 
I don't know if that's a good idea. How about you? Monkey swung down from the tree and hopped onto Crocodile's scaly back. As Crocodile glided through the deep, dark water, he sank lower and lower, and Monkey began to get wet. Oh my goodness, I cannot swim, shouted Monkey. How well I know, said Crocodile, and now I'm going to eat your heart. Eat my heart, said Monkey. Oh, what a pity. I left it up in the tree. What? What? You left your heart in the tree? Crocodile grumbled. What a nuisance. Crocodile returned with Monkey to the muddy brown riverbank. As soon as they reached the shore, Monkey leaped off Crocodile's back and scampered up a tall tree, laughing and chattering. Look, my heart is here, called Monkey from the treetop. Just climb up and get it. Oh, well, Crocodile did not know how to climb trees. He grunted and thrashed and swam away. But, now Monkey wanted the delicious mangoes more than ever. He leaped from treetop to treetop until he discovered some large rocks far down the river. He saw that if he skipped across the rocks to the island, he could feast on mangoes every day. The next morning, Crocodile came swimming down the river looking for Monkey. He heard Monkey chattering, he saw Monkey jump from tree to rock to island. Oh, I will pretend I'm a rock, said Crocodile. When Monkey jumps on me, I will snap him up heart and all. Crocodile lay in the water all day long waiting. When Monkey had eaten his fill, he headed for home with all of the mangoes that he could carry. He jumped off the island onto a rock in the river. He was about to jump onto another rock, but something was wrong. Monkey looked closer, then called out in a cheerful voice, Hello, rock! Crocodile was silent. He lay low in the water. Monkey called out again, I say good evening, rock! Crocodile said nothing. Oh, Rock, will you not greet me this evening? asked Monkey. Crocodile thought that this must mean that the Rock usually said hello. So he said, good evening. Ha! You're not Rock, said Monkey. You're Crocodile. I am as good as a Rock, said Crocodile. You can jump on me to get to the other side. Oh, what a splendid idea, said Monkey. Here I come. Monkey got ready to leap. Crocodile closed his eyes and opened his jaws. But instead of jumping, Monkey popped a mango right into Crocodile's mouth. Bang! Crocodile snapped his jaws shut. Quickly, Monkey jumped on Crocodile's nose, then on to the muddy brown riverbank. Laughing and chattering, Monkey scampered up a tree and swung from branch to branch. Your teeth may be sharp, Monkey shouted to Crocodile, but your mind is dull. Now, Monkey feasts on delicious mangoes every day. Crocodile lies low in the water, keeping an eye on him. And when Monkey crosses the river to go home, he is always careful to jump on a rock, not on a crocodile. The end. Nice job, everybody. Let's stand up and move around a little before we do our next stories. Get ready to move. Stretch your arms out. Stretch them behind your back. 
All right, we'll do if you if you're happy and you know it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet, stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet, stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, say hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, say hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, say hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Clap, clap, stomp, stomp, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Clap, clap, stomp, stomp, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Clap, clap, stomp, stomp. Hooray! Nice job, everyone. All right, let's sit back down, settle in. And when you get the chance, can I see your fingers? I have ten fingers. They all belong to me. I can make them do things. Do you want to see? I can make them jump high. I can make them jump low. I can fold them tight and hold them just so. I can squeeze them tight. I can open them wide. I can wave them all around. I can make them all hide. I can make them jump high. I can make them jump low. I can fold them tight and hold them just so. All right, our next story today is called Mouse Mess. Let me just get organized. All right. Hush, hush, a little mouse shh, is sound asleep inside his house. On the stairs, the sound of feet. Mouse is up. It's time to eat. Crunch, crunch. He wants a cracker. Munch, munch. A cookie snacker. Crackle sweep. He rakes cornflakes. And he jumps into the piles he makes. Sniff, sniff. Ooh, milk and cheese. Mouse would like a taste of these. Splish, splash, whoop. The milk spills out. Food is scattered all about. Sticky, gooey jam to spread, and peanut butter smeared on bread. Tipping, slipping, sugar falls, and mouse pours and pats to make castle walls. Olives, pickles, ketchup, fun. Mouse pops the tops off one by one. Mouse steps back, he looks around. He can't believe the mess he's found. Who made this awful mess? Asks Mouse. These people need to clean their house. Gurgle, burble, water flows. And Mouse rinses the jam from between his toes. And now that Mouse is clean and fed, he leaves the mess and goes to bed. <sighs> the end. 
Nice job, everybody. That's a fun little rhyme that I like to do. And one of the first felts that I made back in the day. All right, we have another book to read next. This is also one of my favorites called Sand Cake by Frank Ash. One summer day, the Bear family went to the beach where they swam and sunned themselves on a blanket. After a while, Baby Bear said that he felt like doing something else. If I make you a cake, will you eat it? He asked Papa Bear. Sure, said Papa Bear. If you use flour, milk, and eggs, I will be happy to eat your cake. Baby Bear looked around. All he could see was sand and water for miles. How can I find flour and eggs and milk at the beach? asked Baby Bear. That's easy, said Papa Bear. Eggs come from a chicken, milk comes from a cow, and flour comes from wheat. Well, if it is so easy, said Baby Bear, then you make a cake with flour, milk, and eggs, and I will eat it. Okay, said Papa Bear, I will. And he got up and he went down to the water's edge. He picked up a stick that had washed up on the beach. With the stick, he drew a chicken in the wet sand, and under the chicken, he drew an egg. He scooped up the egg and put it in Baby Bear's bucket. Then he drew some wheat and ground it up in his hands to make the flour. He added the flour to the eggs. Next, he drew a cow and under the cow, a pail of milk. He poured the milk into the bucket with the eggs and flour. On all of this, he sprinkled some salt from the sea. Then Papa Bear drew an oven, and where the oven door was, he dug a hole and buried the bucket. Come on, he said to Baby Bear, let's go for a swim. By the time we come back, the cake will be ready for you to eat. All the time Baby Bear was swimming, he kept wondering, how will I ever be able to eat that cake? When they came out of the water, Papa Bear dug up the bucket and turned it upside down on the beach. The cake was done. Well now, said Papa Bear, are you going to eat the cake, the nice cake I made for you? Sure, said Baby Bear. He picked up a stick and drew a picture of himself around the cake. Here I am, and I have eaten the cake. See it in my stomach? Papa Bear laughed and gave Baby Bear a great big hug. Now I am hungry too, he said. Then you can both have some of my cake, said Mama Bear, and she opened the picnic basket. And I made mine with real flour and real milk and real eggs. And it was delicious. The end. Great job, everybody. All right, we have one more story today, and this one is called Chato's Kitchen. Chato the cat was relaxing in his front yard when he noticed something interesting. It was a little parade of mice. Dee, 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 dee. Hola, said Chato. Hola, said the mice. Don't worry, I'm a nice, cool cat, said Chato. No problema, said the mice, as they marched over to their new house. Oh, those mice looked so delicious to Chato. He hatched a plan. He would invite them over for dinner and he would gobble them up. So, Chato wrote a note. 
Chato welcomes you to Mikasa and invites your whole tasty family for a surprise dinner tonight at 6 p.m. Then he quickly ch changed the word tasty to the word lovely. He didn't want to reveal his plan. He folded the paper into an airplane and tossed it towards the house of the mice. Well, Mama Mouse read the note out loud and said, should we go? Why not, said Poppy. He seems like a nice, cool cat. Oh, but isn't Chorizo coming over? Chorizo was their friend, who they called Chorizo because he looked like a sausage. Oh, right. Well, we can invite Chorizo to come along to Chato's house, said Poppy. And the mice wrote back, Muchas gracias. We will see you tonight, and we will bring a friend. Well, Chato was very excited. He got to work on making all of the food for tonight's feast. He made tacos and enchiladas and plenty of guacamole. He made tortillas and cooked the beans and made a perfectly spiced batch of salsa. Things were heating up and, ooh, smelling good. Well, over at the mouse house, they were all hard at work as well. They were making plenty of fresh tortillas because they were making quesadillas to bring with plenty of yummy cheese, too. Well, soon, Chorizo arrived at the mouse house, and all of the mice hopped on to Chorizo's back, and they slowly cruised over to Chato's house. Hola, Chato, they called. We brought Chorizo. Chato was excited. Mmm. Chorizo sounded tasty. He walked outside, took one look at the doggy sausage, and yelped, Oh, that's Chorizo, but I am so scared of dogs. And he jumped up onto his roof. Chorizo was hungry. He barked his tail, he barked and wagged his tail, and called out, Hola! Mommy hollowed, Chato, you Silly cat, why are you on the roof? Chorizo is a nice, cool dog. Come down and meet him. Chato hopped down off the roof. <sighs> Hola, Chorizo, he said. And then he said, let's eat. So they laid out their spread of tacos and enchiladas and quesadillas and guacamole and salsa. And they all said, salud, cheers. Chato said it quietly and thought, well, I guess I'm not eating any of my guests tonight, but all of this food sure does look yummy, and it's always nice to have a new friend. The end. Nice job, everybody. Great listening today, and thank you for joining in for another one of AADL Story Times. We're always so happy when you watch. As usual, they are every weekday at 10 a.m., so tune in whenever you feel like it, whenever you get the chance to watch. And we will see you next time. Thanks again for joining. Bye-bye.